Um, so here's the scenario. Right? You have a whole bunch of data here. You have all of your dates here. And let's see if I can make this view a little bit bigger. Help Oz out a little bit. Okay, how about that? Is that good? Yes, that's okay. wonderful. So you have just a number of dates, and I just put in some dummy data here, and just to be able to get you know a, a series of dummy data for all these different days, uh, you know I just put in a kind of a, a, a normal distribution curve, and that normal distribution curve, I say give me a random number with the mean is 500 and the standard deviation is 30. Now the only point of doing this is just so I can get some random data, right? Random data that is in a normal Bell kind of distribution curve. But I could very well at this point just say copy, paste, special, and you know just do values and just get the data here. But the point is this is just some dummy data. So the question is then how do you set up alerts so that you're only paying attention to 594 here but not paying attention to 498? So that you're only paying attention to the things in this column that are, you know, that are falling outside of what would be normally expected. So let's yeah. walk through the setup on this. So I'm going to unhide some, some columns here. Let's unhide this. So we're going to walk through first off how you calculate the mean. Here I've just taken the average, the average of everything that's in this column here, column C, and it's very close to 500, which shouldn't surprise you, right, because we said in our distribution here we wanted a mean of 500 and a standard deviation of 30. So Here's, here's where the magic starts to happen. It's setting up one standard deviation. So one standard deviation usually accounts for 60, almost 70% of most data points in a normal distribution. Um, so in this case, the way you set this up, you say standard STDEV, standard deviation, and you're grabbing your data points. And it's telling you what the standard deviation of that is. So in many instances, you could say you want one standard deviation, two or three, and in, in, in many instances, three standard deviation gets you to close to 99-ish percent of all data points. So at that point, you're really reacting to just one percent. So what we're doing here is we're just taking that one standard deviation and multiplying that times three. Now here's how you handle kind of the upper and lower control limits. So you want to react whenever things are too high, an upper control limit, or when things are too low, a lower control limit. Right? So in this instance, what we're doing is we're taking G3 plus G5, or your mean, times or plus your standard deviations, and saying this is 592. Your lower control limit is 405. So somewhere between 400 and 592-ish would be kind of what we would expect in a normal process, and things outside of that would be kind of special cause. So let's talk about how you would set up your alerts here. We could have done some color coding, but you know, we didn't. Um, so what is this? We're saying that if this number over here to the left, if it is less than your lower control limit, then give me an alert. And if it's greater than your upper control limit, give me an alert, else just give me a null value. What that means is now we're starting to kind of understand when there are things we should pay attention to and when we when there are things we shouldn't pay attention to. And since I do have this as a random number here, you know, we can see how that all changes you know, as we as we uh, update the random variable. So let's pull this back to me real quick and, and walk through some of the some of the thinking here. One moment. This is some good stuff. Okay, so, so so think about this as being you have your normal bell curve, right? And as you get kind of one standard deviation, two, three out, as you get three out, you're kind of messing with the tails at this point of your kind of a standard curve, assuming you have normal data. But when you're looking at control limits, if you think about your control charts, and control charts are like you know six sigma or any sort of process engineering where you'd have kind of an upper and lower and you have those kind of charts that tells you when you're supposed to pay attention to stuff. Really all that is is taking your bell curve and your three standard deviations and cutting that all over on its side and putting that bell curve over on its side. Right? And at that point you're seeing most of the data is in the middle. Uh, however, some things fall out of upper or lower control limits. And so that's just one way and you could, you could tighten that up and say I want two standard deviations, etc. So there's a lot of ways to end up playing with that, but that's one of the ways that you can use Excel every day you can use spreadsheets to actually help you better manage uh, your business. Now, now, I'm curious. Now, see, okay, okay, I'm going I'm to cut to it, and I'm going to say, you know, this is just five. This is this is almost, this is way outside of five. Because the, the, the thought process and also...